Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster, and today we're reviewing the Sterling Ray 34 and asking the question, can a company's import line outshine their domestic counterpart? Well, let's find out. This is the Sterling by Music Man Stingray Ray 34. So there's several different tiers of models offered by Sterling by Music Man. The Sterling lineup starts out with the Ray 4 or the SUB which features a basswood body, a maple or a rosewood-ish, I think it's a laurel or something fretboard, and a two-band preamp that is eh, not great. And then the next highest tier is the Ray 24, which I have yet to check out. Those feature a classic style two-band preamp, a mahogany body, and a maple or rosewood fretboard on a maple neck. And at the top of the line, you have the Ray 34, which is what we have here. Now this particular model features an ash body, though if you get a painted body, those are mahogany. So this one has an ash body and a roasted maple neck. That's right, just like the current US Stingray lineup, these have roasted maple necks as well. The pickup is Sterling's own H1 El Nico humbucker, and you have a three-band preamp. So the hardware and pickup combination on this base is very interesting. For the hardware, you're looking at the same type of hardware that you would get on a US series base from 2017 and before. That was before the facelift. The preamp is a 9 volt preamp, just like my 2017 Stingray. It's a 3 band as well, and they're both featuring Alnico pickups. However, brand new, you can still find a 2017 Stingray for about $2,000. I got mine lightly used for about $1,200, which is still twice what I paid for this. I snagged this bass on sale at Musician's Friend for $5.99, and they normally MSRP for $7.99. That's about half what you're getting a 2017 US Stingray for, and that was on the used market. This bass is a little bit over one quarter the price of a brand new US Stingray. So this begs the question, is your money better spent buying a used 2017 and before Stingray, or buying one of these Sterlings? Well, let's find out. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and hit that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. Not bad. So the neck on this thing with the roasted maple is high quality, but I feel like they could have done a better job sanding it. It's not the smoothest neck in the world. It's not rough by any means. There's no rough spots. The roasted maple necks on my Ibanez instruments, however, including the Talman TMB 505, which was actually $50 less brand new than what I paid for this, has a much smoother neck. Totally though, this thing sounds good. So as I mentioned earlier, this bass features a similar style three band preamp to that of my 2017 US Stingray. Both are nine volts, both are three band. That's all I really know. Honestly, I don't know the specifics. There could be some differences. I mean, this is a much more mass produced instrument than a US Stingray. However, I believe this is basically modeled after the 2017. Speaking of this preamp, let's go ahead and explore it a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything down all the way and we'll take it from there. So 
here's what this bass sounds like with the preamp turned all the way down. Yeah, off the bat, it, it sounds pretty good. I mean, it, it sounds like a Stingray, honestly. Now let's turn up my favorite knob, the bass knob. Here's the bass control at 50%. So here's the bass control all the way up. That sounds fat. Now let's check out this mid control. Here's just the mids at 50% and the bass back all the way down. Sounds good. Now one little nice thing that's on these basses is the pickup has a built-in thumb rest, whereas some of the classic Stingray pickups don't. They just have the two little nubs and you kind of put your thumb wherever. This one has a nice little ramp for your thumb and it's a nice little feature. Good job. <laughs> Now I'm going to turn the mids up all the way. <laughs> now let's check out this treble control. Here's the treble at 50%. Yep, this is where things start to get a little bit bright. So now here's the treble at 100%. Beware. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, that's the EQ. So now let me show you some of my favorite tones here. I remember seeing a YouTube video where Sterling Ball was talking about some of the new Stingray specials, and he mentioned the preamp and how it's best to start on a Stingray with the preamp all the way down. And I thought about it and yeah, he's right. I mean, he builds them. And that kind of changed my approach to this instrument as a whole, because usually with preamps, I kind of start with everything in the middle and go from there. Regardless of if it's just boost or boost and cut, I just stick to the notch in the middle and leave it be most of the time and take it from there. But to start with everything all the way down and kind of bring things up as you see fit, you can get some really solid tones with that kind of mindset. And some of my favorite tones with this instrument involve boosting the bass and giving it a little sprinkle of mids and a little sprinkle of treble. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> and here's what the slap tone for this thing sounds like. <laughs> I guess there we have it. What about me? Uh, of course I was gonna play you too. I am the superior instrument. I'm American made. I have. Well, I mean, you guys have very similar hardware, and you guys have a very similar kind of pickup with the same type of magnets. You're like twice the price used. But, but uh, I have the cool colors. I, I'm cool. Okay, I guess we'll see what you guys sound like together. Okay, looks like we'll do a quick tone comparison between the Sterling Ray 34 and my Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray from 2017. I'm going to use three tone configurations with each bass. Everything all the way down, everything at 50%, and then my favorite configuration with the boosted bass and just a sprinkle of mids and treble. And we'll have the clips side by side so you can compare them directly. Let's start with the preamps flat. <laughs> Now here's the preamp with everything at 50%. Thank you. 
finally, here's my favorite configuration. Both of those basses sounded pretty good and pretty similar. Let me know which bass you'd pick in the comments below. So here's my final thoughts on the Sterling Stingray Ray 34. This bass is a great value for its money, especially if you can get it on sale. Used, you can also find these things pretty cheap as well. Sterlings do not hold their value like the US models do, relatively speaking. If you like Stingrays and don't want to spend two grand, this is your next best option. You get a roasted maple neck, just like the US models, though the finish on this isn't as smooth as my US Stingray. But I mean, that's to be expected given the price difference. You also get a very similar and very good 3-band preamp that's 9 volt in this base. And the overall build and craftsmanship is pretty good. Two things I have to fault Sterling for here are some minor QC issues and the weight of this instrument. This bass is 11 pounds. Yeah. And this is actually my second one. The first one got damaged in shipping, and I had to exchange that with Musician's Friend, which was no problem, and that was a very smooth and easy thing to do. And the first one I got was 10.8 pounds, and this one was 11. So I think this particular batch is using some really heavy ash. My US Stingray, on the other hand, is 9.2 pounds or 9.4 pounds. A significant difference. And the BFR on the wall back here is 7.4 pounds or something like that. In regards to quality control, this isn't a bad base. However, there's quite a few pick guard screws that are a bit crooked. And that's just a little nitpick of mine. This base isn't meant to be at the same price or quality tier of its US counterpart. And it shows. However, if you're looking for something that's close enough and about a quarter to a third of the price of the US models, this thing should be on your radar. So what am I going to rate the Sterling Stingray Ray 34? Ugh. I'm gonna go ahead and rate this bass. Four claws out of five. The ash body, roasted maple neck, solid build quality, and excellent electronics make this thing a great value and a great upgrade from a Ray 24 or even an SUB. And for those of you looking to grab a used, pre-facelifted US Stingray, you should check some of these out too, because you'll be spending a lot less money, and you'll get that tone that you want. The one major advantage of the used US Stingrays over this is the finish options. I believe this is only available in a black, which has a mahogany body, and the natural, which has the ash body. Whereas the US Stingrays came in a plethora of colors, and you can find them all over the place so you can really have your pick of the litter. So anyways, if you want to get that modern Stingray feel without spending that modern Stingray money, you should probably check one of these out. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Sterling Ray 34. And as always, until we groove again.